Welcome to this video on anemia. The prefix an means without and the suffix emia means relating to the blood. And what anemia actually is, it's a reduction in the ability of the blood to carry oxygen. So you get reduced oxygen capacity. A reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. And as you probably know, the oxygen in the blood is carried by the red cells. So this is often associated with reduced red cell numbers. And also a reduction in the amount of haemoglobin, reduced haemoglobin. The haemoglobin being the red pigment in the red cells that transports the oxygen. And I think it's important to notice at this point that anemia is not a disease. In its own right, rather it is a, a symptom of many possible diseases. Uh, it's a feature of disordered physiology but not a disease in its own right. Now, why is it important for us to know about anemia? Well, the WHO, the World Health Organization, and th these figures I'm about to give you are, are an indictment on humanity, but they are the latest WHO figures. 1.62 billion people suffer from anemia. This is remarkably common. And that works out at 24.8% of the world's population. So basically a quarter of the world's population are anemic. That's the current situation. Um, particularly prevalent in children, particularly prevalent in women. Um, so it's useful to think about what normal haemoglobin is and it, do, it does vary a bit so in men normal haemoglobin is 130 to 180 grams per litre of blood or if you prefer 13 to 18 grams per uh, deciliter of blood that's per 100 mils in the UK we're using these figures now grams per litre in women um, tends to be a bit lower so uh, 115 to 165 grams uh, a litre in women would be an acceptable range so given that there's so many people with anemia we need to know what causes this so that we can prevent it. And I think we can divide the causes of anemia into three main types. So first of all, it's reduced production of red blood cells the erythrocytes. So not enough red cells are produced, therefore we get reduced cell numbers, reduced haemoglobin, reduced oxygen carrying capacity. Um, alternatively, another group of causes are associated with increased destruction of red blood cells once they're made. So too many red blood cells are destroyed after being made. And thirdly, they can be simply lost. Loss of um, red blood cells.
they can simply bleed out of the circulatory system for many different reasons and this is called blood loss anemia. So the three main causes there. Now if you've got a big sheet of paper you can put everything that I'm about to do for these subcategories uh, on one piece of paper because what we're going to do now is uh, subdivide these into uh, interesting aspects that fit in with these classifications but I'm not going to put them all on this piece of paper because it would be far too cluttered. <laughs> so let's first of all think about um, the decreased production of red blood cells. So reduced production. of red blood cells. So what we're filling out here is, uh, is, is this bit. In fact, I might colour that. There we go. Reduced production of red cells. We're doing this bit at the moment on this piece of paper. So reduced production of red cells. Um, I think, I think you can divide this in different ways, but this is kind of the way I found work, so over teaching many students. Um, thinking about malnutrition first. So mal means abnormal, abnormal nutrition. In this case, not enough of particular nutrients. So malnutrition as a cause. And the one that comes to mind straight away, of course, is iron. The centre of every haemoglobin molecule is iron. And iron deficiency anemia is by far and away the most common form of anemia in the world. So we need enough iron in the diet to produce the red blood cells because the haemoglobin molecules depend on iron. They're all structured around iron. It's a complex protein, but it's all structured around iron. And the other one that springs to mind is B12. Vitamin B12 is absolutely essential for red cell production in the bone marrow, as indeed is folic acid. Absolutely essential. And of course, um, protein is also necessary. I mean, the haemoglobin is a protein, so it needs protein and it needs iron. So iron is essential because iron is the center of the, is the, center of the haemoglobin molecule. And the B12 and the folic acid, the reason they're essential is um, lack of these interferes with DNA synthesis. So if we're short of these, we get reduced DNA synthesis. in the production of the red cells. Because the stem cells in the bone marrow start off with a nucleus. The red cells only lose their nucleus later on. So normal DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid physiology is absolutely essential. So that's the first um, category, malnutrition which can reduce the production and indeed reduce the quality of the red cells. Um, now the next one is uh, pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia. And this one's kind of tied up with the B12 in, in a sense. But the pernicious anemia, the difference is that this is uh, autoimmune. There is autoimmunity. Now, auto means self. So in autoimmunity, the body's own immune system is attacking its own tissues. And in this case, the autoimmune attack is attacking the gastric parietal. cells. Now these are cells in the gastric mucosa 
they make the hydrochloric acid, but they also make intrinsic factor. What used to be called the intrinsic factor of Castle. Now what happens is the intrinsic factor is released by the stomach. That combines with the B12 in the diet, and it's actually the combination of the B12, which in this context is called the extrinsic factor. The way it combines with the intrinsic factor, the two molecules come together and combine to form a single molecule. And it's only in that combined form that the B12 can be absorbed. So the intrinsic factor is necessary for the absorption of the B12. And if the gastric parietal cells that normally produce hydrochloric acid and produce intrinsic factor as well, if those gastric parietal cells are damaged and destroyed by the autoimmune processes, we don't produce the intrinsic factor. So no matter how much B12 you eat in your diet, it can't be absorbed because it's not combined with the intrinsic factor, which is absent. So that's uh, pernicious anemia. Now, another form, quite a frightening form, is uh, aplastic. Aplastic anemia. A means without, plastic means tissue. So aplastic anemia is a condition of the bone marrow where it basically uh, stops producing, stops working the bone marrow. This is bone marrow failure. So in aplastic anemia, we don't get the red blood cells. Uh, but, but neither do we get the white cells. Neither do we get that other essential blood product, the, uh, the platelets. So we don't get the erythrocytes, we don't get the leukocytes, and we don't get the thrombocytes. So clearly these patients will become anemic, but they're at risk of uh, life-threatening infection due to the um, leukopenia, the redu reduced number of white blood cells, and indeed the uh, hemorrhagic complications associated with um, platelet deficiency, um, so-called thrombocytopenia. Now another classic one <clears throat> for the production of red blood cells is uh, chronic kidney disease, CKD. So chronic kidney disease. Now you probably remember that the erythropoietin is produced by the kidneys. So when the kidneys are diseased, we're going to get reduced production of erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is the hormone that goes to the bone marrow to stimulate the process of erythropoiesis, which is production of the red blood cells. So when I, when I was young, we used to give chronic kidney disease patients um, blood transfusions. Now, fortunately, we can give um, EPO as an injection. It's now available, although I think it's still quite expensive. But another reason why we get uh, this reduced production. Reduced production of the red cells. Now also on, on uh, reduced production, another condition we come across fairly frequently is anemia of chronic disease. So in chronic disease, the patients can become anemic. And this can be as a result of uh, inflammatory diseases. Classically, we might think of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis. Um, anemia of chronic disease can be associated with cancer. as well and what happens in, in both of these um, both of these 
the inflammatory and the cancer is we get the release of uh, inflammatory cytokines. It's the cytokines, which are these uh, cell to cell communication molecules. And the inflammatory cytokines um, reduce the production of erythropoietin or they interfere with the ability of the bone marrow to respond to erythropoietin. Therefore, we can get this anemia of chronic disease. And it's worth thinking about why we have such a problem with um, anemia, particularly the simple deficiency anemias. And um, one reason is, is, is this. People simply don't know what we've just talked about on this video. <coughs> so it's our role to tell people that they need the iron and the B12 and the folic acid. And this can be related to uh, poverty. Lack of services.